thank you for joining me. It has been, it's been quite a while, I know. It's been probably several months since you last saw me or you last saw any video up on this channel. But we're back. And again, thank you for joining and thank you for tuning in. Welcome to our podcast, Obtaining Large Settlements for Injury Clients, brought to you by myself, Kwaku Darfur, and the Darfur Law Firm, as well as the Injury Advocates. We provide to you useful content that will help folks that are going through any kind of injury claims, give you some insight, what to expect, and just great knowledge that you can use for your injury claim. And today I'd like to discuss a case against the Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport. This is a recent client that hired us because they were injured at the airport as they were deplaning. And so we'd like to discuss some of the intricacies when you're bringing a negligence claim against a airport or a municipality or, or a state government, right? You have to be careful of some different things. Now this claim was brought under regular negligence regular tort claim and so the airport uh, has a duty of care now you're probably wondering well what does duty of care mean a uh, duty of care is basically it's a legal concept that states that an individual must act in a reasonable manner so as to not cause some kind of dangerous situation or danger to a person and that reasonableness would be what a like-minded person in a similar situation would do right so if that person is tasked with having a a higher knowledge or a higher awareness and they're going to be held to that higher standard. In this incident here, client fell as he was deplaning from an airplane and fell on a staircase, portable staircase that was attached to the airplane. So that then brings us to, okay, what is the duty of care that's owed to this, to this individual? Well, the airline or the airport staff has a duty of care that they operate the the stairs maintain the stairs in such a reasonable manner so that it does not and will not cause injury to it to a passenger or even to a, a non-passenger that's using it right in this instance there's a heightened duty because this passenger was invited and there's different statuses that you have depending on if you are somebody that's a paying guest a customer invited or not invited onto the property obviously this client was a passenger of the airline he was a customer at the airport so he was in he was invited there he was supposed to be there and the airport and the airline and the people that maintain the stairs portable stairs did not maintain it in a proper manner so to get at how they should have maintained it we looked at several different things right first we looked at who was responsible for maintaining you have the airport which is actually owned by the the city of Fort Lauderdale and also the Broward County Board of Commissioners who oversees it right then and you also have the airline that that was chartered that takes folks to and fro then you have the service company that was responsible for bringing the stairs out so we end up suing all of them and that's because you you don't want anyone off the hook right and you don't know ultimately which entity is responsible for what so one entity may be responsible for just the, the maintenance of the stairs but you also have to look at well the airline they have their passengers that go up and down these stairs every day so they also should have some responsibility but the actual ramp itself is actually over owned by a third third party or a different entity. So you just suit all of them and let, let, let it work itself out. Now, in this particular case, the reason for the suit is because the last stair where the client tripped was just not maintained correctly. It didn't have the proper anti-slip resistance. And also the guardrails that are supposed to help you get down, they don't extend all the way down to where this portable stair was attached to, right? It cuts off at a certain point of the staircase. So there's also, you know, you look at, well, you know, there's codes that govern these building codes and, and so forth. And you have to look at like the staircase itself. Was it, did it have a proper slope? So what we do is we, we hired an expert and the expert went, the expert took a look and inspected the staircase where it was and deemed that there was different violations here that were involved. Now with that in hand, along with our clients, medicals and injuries, now we have a basis of, okay, how are they negligent, right? What duty of care did they breach? 
how did they breach that duty of care, what the damages of our clients of our client is, and then obviously, you know, the injuries are part of the damages there. So we put all that together and we proceed with the case. Unfortunately for our client, he suffered a ruptured patellar tendon, which is a very nasty injury. You know, you can be out for quite a while and, and someone that's active may not be able to resume the same kind of lifestyle they had before. So when you're looking at you know your your damages that your client has suffered you have to look at well how has it affected their entire life right you look at their job are they able to do that job that they used to do before or do they have to take on a different job do they have to take on a different role at the job are their future prospects of earning are they diminished because of this injury because maybe they're not a lot they're not able to perform at the same level or sometimes you have you have a client that maybe does speaking engagements and they're not able to meet all the different speaking engagements that they are hired for because they're not able to travel as much anymore so that decreases their earning potential right you look at also the enjoyment of your life right these things have an effect on your own enjoyment of life whether it's with the personal relationships such as with a spouse or a girlfriend you may not be able to be intimate the same way with the spouse anymore you may not be able to pursue your hobbies that you did before which are could be you know physical lifting weights it could be um, riding a bicycle there's so many things that you know as your attorney we have to look at well the, the the total aspect of your life how has that been impacted and now you're looking at the age of the person our client was a young man so he had at least you know 30 40 more years of life ahead of him that he could enjoy but because of this injury he isn't able to enjoy certain aspects of his life for decades and what is that worth right obviously the pain and suffering because you know somebody that has a ruptured patella tendon has to have a surgery and what kind of pain and suffering does that does that does that produce right and that pain may not go away and the doctors take a look at it and the doctors will tell them and he's gonna be subjective himself how he feels and if that pain doesn't go away you're entitled to compensation for that for having to live with that certain amount of pain for the rest of your life you know the person could have young children and it's almost impossible or very difficult to bend over and pick up and lift your, your young children and and you know what price do you have what price can you put on something like that right so we look at all of those different different aspects of the damages to come up with some 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 number to present and that's whether we are doing this pre-suit or whether we're doing this in litigation going towards a trial and ultimately at trial right so in essence you know when you're you're, you're bringing a claim against an airport a governmental entity you have to be cognizant of who is at fault you have to be cognizant of what's called sovereign immunity sovereign immunity basically shields shields the entity the city the municipality in this case an airport from damages above a certain amount right now the cap in florida is two hundred thousand for an individual against for a cert for one action and th up to three hundred thousand dollars for multiple agencies so in essence you know your case can go to trial and you can win a multi-million dollar award but because of what the concept of sovereign immunity you may not be able to obtain all those damages without doing what's called a claims bill which then goes to the legislature in Tallahassee and they vote on it and they have to vote to approve a claims bill to allow you to get an award in excess of the, the cap so those are some of the things that we had to dealt, deal with with our clients case this is just a small overview of a claim a negligence claim that would be brought against any type of governmental entity and the pitfalls to look out for and also how to craft the claim ultimately this claim is still in litigation for us and we're poised to get the the maximum amount of damages for our client to make sure that he's made whole given the, the trauma that he's been through if you've been involved in this kind of injury this kind of uh, accident you know at a public facility you know you, you have to take action quick you have to make sure that it's documented you have to make sure that you do get treatment that is equivalent to whatever your injury is and you should consider 
consult with an attorney because it's an intricate area of the law. If you think you have a case that you know deems itself for an attorney to take a look at, I will gladly take a look at that for you and then give you my analysis of it and sum it up for you. Feel free, you can give my firm a phone call, 754-812-8444, or you can email me at kdar4 at darforlaw.com. Please remember though, if you do find this content valuable, if you think we've helped you and provided some valuable information, go ahead and subscribe by hitting the link down below and it will alert you of our future videos that we have. Thank you for joining us.